Hello and welcome to the second IHF wheelchair handball seminar. My name is Courtney Gayen. I am a member of the IHF media team and I am your moderator for today's session. As you can see on your screen right now, we have three translation options available for this seminar, French, Spanish, and Arabic. And you can use these only if you're joining us on Zoom. You can find them at the bottom of your screen by clicking the globe icon marked interpretation. This second IHF wheelchair handball seminar is part of the IHF Virtual Academy, which itself falls under the umbrella of the IHF Education Center. You can access the IHF Education Center at ihfeducation.ihf.info. This second IHF wheelchair handball seminar comprises two days of lectures, both this weekend, presented by top wheelchair handball experts from around the world. We do have a certificate of participation available, but only if you join on Zoom live, both sessions. If you are signing in on Zoom using a name other than your full and correct name, please make sure we have that for your certificate. So as I mentioned, we have two days of great lectures coming up presented by top wheelchair handball experts from around the world. Today, we have IHF Wheelchair Handball Working Group Chairman Frantisek Daborski, as well as Danilo Ferreira, Martin Dockham, and Flavio Mello. We're gonna hear from all of them today, and this lecture is being recorded, so you will be able to access it later for on-demand viewing, both on the IHF Education Center and the IHF Facebook page. And please do ask questions throughout as we will have a question and answer session at the end. So Frantisek, we're ready to begin. Hello for everybody. Good morning, um, good noon or good evening. It, uh, I'm very happy that I can start uh, after uh, our moderator, Courtney Gahan, uh, this uh, second uh, IHF wheelchair handball seminar. And uh, it is really for me, not only pleasure, but also big honor. Uh, I would like uh, to ask Viola, please, uh, next uh, uh, slide. Uh, it is agenda. And uh, to this agenda, I would only like uh, to add that this uh, very symbolic date, because in Tokyo is uh, finishing uh, this Paralympic Games. And uh, it is our main goal in six years to be also on the program program of Paralympic Games or in seven years. Uh, I would like to mention also that one of uh, member of working uh, group, Mr. Minoru Kino from Japan, was involved in this Paralympic game and he was uh, even involved also in uh, this uh, torch uh, running. Uh, on this uh, slide, uh, you can see wheelchair handball working team. Players are in bold because players are more important. And uh, everything uh, what uh, is later coaches, official national federation, etc., is uh, something uh, what uh, is service. Everything is doing uh, for players and uh, to uh, give a possibility for players to compete and to have uh, also a correct preparation for it. Uh, concerning uh, National Federation, uh, I would like uh, to give you some example. Uh, for example, Pakistan this year organized a tournament, which uh, was four days tournament for five clubs. Uh, maybe you was looking in the past also some information of IHF web about uh, or from Sweden, Sweden just now have a 10 days uh, action and in this 10 days action is also involved in Sweden so-called uh, para handball, also wheelchair handball. 
Uh, another, uh, another information is uh, that, for example, in Portugal, we have 11 clubs, or in Netherlands, uh, we have even 10 clubs. Uh, also, uh, we can see that in last year, this development is uh, going very satisfactory and is going uh, uh, also relatively fast. Concerning uh, Continental Confederation, very important is uh, for Oskoskabal, also salt uh, and uh, uh, Central America Handball Confederation. Uh, they have already eight uh, national federation uh, which uh, are active and at least another four national federation uh, are trying uh, to start. Uh, in Europe, uh, which have also long tradition, is a situation that we have nine national federation with active national team, and uh, at least uh, 13 another national federation uh, was uh, uh, telling uh, that uh, they, are, they would like to start or they are already starting with some activities. Uh, in Asia is a situation that already Pakistan, but the long tradition have uh, also Japan, which was one of pioneers. Uh, uh, Continental Confederation already uh, are not very active, which are not very active till now, uh, is uh, Africa and uh, is uh, North America. But uh, according representative of these bodies, uh, they would like uh, to prepare some activities also for future. It's necessary to mention also Oceania, because uh, first uh, so called uh, World Championship, uh, which was not official and which was not under umbrella of IHF uh, in Brazil some years ago, uh, team, national team from Australia participate. And uh, it's also necessary to working uh, IHF working group. Uh, I will be mentioned my colleague uh, Flavio Mello. Then uh, is uh, Nicole Rabenseifer from Austria. We have Minoru Kino uh, from Japan and Jerzy, uh, Jerzy Eliash uh, from Poland. Uh, people from office, of course, are very important and they are also helping uh, today by organization of this uh, of this webinar. Uh, next, uh, please. Uh, these are main tasks which uh, were fulfilled uh, last year. Uh, it's necessary by the start uh, to underline main goals. It is create international competition structure. We are starting with it. But uh, because this knocked down by COVID-19, we lost uh, approximately two years. Uh, we planned already last year common IHF and EHF championship in six SI wheelchair handball. Uh, same was uh, postponed for this year, but uh, unfortunately was necessary to postpone uh, for two 2022. Uh, we hope that next year will be not only championship, it is too fast, Viola, can you go back? That, uh, that uh, next year will be uh, possible not to organize only six aside championship in Europe, but in cooperation with uh, South and Central America Confederation, uh, also uh, in wheelchair handball for SI. Uh, also now, 
this uh, core task, which was fulfilled. It is not only unified rules. It was very important because uh, we need IHF uh, rules, which are neutral for all national federation. In the past, you know that we have different variant in different continent and even in different countries. This competition manual, classification rules and regulation contact with APC as recognized member. Uh, last, please, uh, this uh, main plans for the future. Uh, next year, hopefully I mentioned it already, are this uh, two championship, uh, 2023, will be hopefully second IHF wheelchair handball world championship which later have to continue each odd year and to receive also full IPC membership because till now we are so called recognized member and uh, to receive full IH, uh, IPC membership means that then we have also chance uh, to uh, to fulfill our main goal to be on the program of uh, Paralympic Games uh, 2028. Uh, concerning uh, this even years, then we hope that more and more continent, uh, not only uh, South America and uh, Europe, but also on other continents, will be able to organize uh, continental uh, championships. Also, from my side, uh, it is nearly all. I would like to also mention that the working group has a lot of collaborators, uh, not only lectures which are starting today or tomorrow, uh, but uh, very important is uh, also, for example, uh, Vincent Breto from Spain, which is the main responsible person for referee and delegates. And we are looking for new referee and new delegates, but also Kees van Breukelen from Netherlands, which is main expert for classification. Also, thank you very much that you was coming. Uh, I see that is nearly 50 people already. It is a very nice neighbor, number. And uh, I wish uh, good luck to lecture which will follow today and tomorrow. And first of all, I would like uh, to wish good luck for all people which are actively involved in these activities. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Frantisek. So next we are going to hear from Danilo Ferreira from Portugal, and he is going to talk to us about training in wheelchair handball six aside. Hello, good morning, everyone. I want to tell thanks to EHF for invitation for participating in second EHF wheelchair handball seminary. Uh, and I need to tell you, uh, sorry, my English, but uh, I try to speak something English for you understand, but it's better maybe speak English or Portuguese. But Portuguese is more difficult. I, I want to share with you some ideas, the kind of work we, we made in Portugal. And uh, okay, let's go. We speak uh, the first, before we speak uh, defense or our attack, I, I want to speak some uh, little one with initiation because I, I think it's very important. Okay. We have in Portugal one problem because when the players come to play uh, wheelchair handball, the most of them don't have the past of sport. And that uh, creates a, a problem because don't have a routine sportive and we need to teach them all of sport. We need to, to teach uh, how they, they, they dominate the wheelchair. We need to teach them 
the lingua, language of uh, handwell and then we need to to need to three three moments in the process the first moment how they the control the wheelchair the second moment they need to control wheelchair and the ball and the third moment they need to chair wheelchair the ball and the opponent that is not fast uh, like uh, the coach or trainer want this uh, process length and we we need to work them then because of that I, I i tell you we need to 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 teach, teach them the the kind of uh, work in the wheelchair when he start and we stop the pull the wheelchair the position of the body and the very 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 work with the wheelchair movements in front in back in the always moment in fast slow for the the wheelchair need to come like his body okay i think it's very important before handball because they they don't know uh, made that movements and they, they didn't know control the wheelchair is very very difficult to play handball okay now some some ideas i uh, for share with you with training in defense some objectives we need to recover your ball fast uh, try always force an attacker make an error try difficult ball circulation because uh, attack don't have uh, fast circulation is more difficult to score that the collaboration with the goalkeeper and we we need to tell to the players we need to put our body in front or arm of the ball and not in front of the other wheelchair lead to attacker to ineffective and zone difficult because shooters if they go to zone no 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 so easy to shoot is more easy to defense uh, have Susef and don't concede the goal is the normal for us. Now we start to work with uh, trainer and the player. We need to one by one or one by the team together in front. It's very important keep the head up because the the players need to see all all the field all the players for uh, play better very important the coordination sometimes is not easy because the functionality of the players uh, is difficult to coordination but we need to work always the very 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 hours the coordination forward and the back moments that i speak in the, before and the, the speed of reaction for the play with the better performance we start uh, two against one in the middle of the field i work in portugal uh, the, the uh, defender go uh, keep the attacker and they have to need to out of him play one against one no dribbling because we uh, we've used the dribbling the game is more slow okay then when we work uh, I, I i think it's important to tell you we need to start in the one against one and then two against two three against three because the difficulty is more uh, high in the more players more difficult here in the three against three we need to hide the the the, the defender needs to see all field and the ball and the oh, on the other players they need to make very trajectories and paces 
pass, pass and reception on the go and with and without ball is very important uh, work with without ball very very important here i uh, is four against four with pivot great communication and the mutual help is very important uh, we don't have sosef susis with the players without communication with the other players because then they know they have difficult to know where is uh, our uh, players on the field very important this way the attackers uh, will work for the attackers didn't know how defense and go to make the movement movement here is one exercise more uh, complex and a lot of defense communication work in the arms is very important work a lot with arms up because difficult the paces of attack close the uh, opposite side of the ball because uh, don't have the pass to inside of the pivot and fast uh, displacement for we catch the, the attack fast okay that is some exercise of defense and now i, I want to to tell the little resume of defense is very important always work the helps between the players because i i have the i need to have sure if i miss, have a mistake another player come to help me never lose the defensive system we need to work the 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 team for keep the system more uh, time possible constant communication inside of the team always always uh, dissuade the attackers and keep the team on group near of the ball okay that is some ideas of work of defense we 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 made here in portugal and now we go to attack some objectives on the attack don't lose post the, the ball induce defense defender to make mistakes create imbalance in defense vertical trajectories because is fast we go to the goal stock variability and the best of all score the goals and now like i tell before is very important we work without ball and the more easy one against one okay in the some area on the field we play and we take take uh, uh, fint one against one without ball with ball okay work with and without ball performance a lot of movements without the ball all athletes must defend and attack in the specific posts then we go play two against one okay fix defender well okay the attacker needs to fix defender for then uh, pass the ball to the uh, another attacker to shoot in the good condition to score attack quickly that quickly is quickly enough not so quickly then is we go to mistake and we go lost the the attack all players must defend and attack in the all uh, specific posts three against two is very good when defense play two only because uh, the attacker needs to understand the game and the movement fast for the keep the good shoot vertical attack and goal and pin defender no ball movements accurate and fast paces 
here we have three against three in the same line and we need to pivot the, the, the pivot pivot is very important for the block in interior and exterior for uh, keep the defense out of the ball use the blocks by the line players attack space between defenders is very important that attack space in between defender because if we made the right sure someone in the in the field are alone to good position to shoot performance fades and fast paces then it's only here is a exercise to shoot of wing fast and short trajectories oriented toward to the goal hard passes okay that is the some exercise of work to 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 attack and the, i i want to say like i i i did it uh, in defense a little uh, notes for attack we need to always try play two against one it's it's the more easier to score when we put one defense in and then we go play two against him it's more easier for attack we need to avoid using dribbling because uh, it's very very difficult play with dribbling because the play are more time to stop the attack attack will be slower if the dribbling players need to know his function or, or like in the attack in the defense always on the field needs to clear the func function and the on the field okay now i put a, a little movie that is the portuguese championship final of that year so three minutes for we see oops In the red are Ape de Porto and the white is Ape de Leria. They are the best team of Portugal. Some most of players play in the national team. Some and this I think is good to see how we play in Portugal. A little a little thing. Here we see two Ape de Port defended in the 4 1. Okay. And he changed one player on attack for defense.
is, is I want to share with you too. When we work, we need to try to match players with the same functionality for don't keep uh, frustration on the training and uh, play and you want to want to play more and more and more. Okay, I stop the video now. That is a little video. From conclusion, in conclusion, it is important to say that wheelchair well was the same dynamics as regular handball. The difference are in the number of players on the court and high to go and position of player play use and wheelchair. After all, it is not different. All handball is handball and we need to play and teach them. And I want to give two congratulations to IHF for seminary and and 2028. I hope we are in Paralympic Games. Thank you for all attention. Okay, stop it. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. So now we are going to hear from Martijn Dokkum from the Netherlands, and he is going to speak about recruitment of players. Sorry, it's not the... Here it is. Great. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about uh, recruitment of players, as I said. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about how to interact with the players, the recruitment, and a little bit of sponsorships. Uh, the introduction, well, first of all, my name is Martijn. I'm a player of the Dutch uh, national team. And in Holland, I play for the team called uh, CSV Handball. Uh, beside the handball, I'm working as a graphic designer. And, uh, well, I like to travel, make pictures. Uh, photography is also a hobby of mine. Uh, how to interact with players? Uh, you have two things, on-court or off-court. Uh, on-court, uh, we try to keep interact with all of the players. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, when somebody has a little injury, for example, during training, we try to give them another uh, job to do so uh, he or she can still join the, the training. And for example, you can give, um, uh, sorry, uh, for example, you can get uh, throwing a ball to uh, in, in, a, in a training or uh, act as a referee. Uh, so all the players will be involved during the training and not uh, si uh, sit along the side. Uh, of course, we also try to keep the players interact with each other. Uh, well, we all have to problems of COVID-19. So we couldn't train or play for uh, a few uh, weeks, months. Um, so there was, uh, uh, it was quiet. Uh, so our trainer sent it, uh, little cards to us so we can still um, interact with each other. And when uh, the cards are uh, were there, we, uh, somebody talked to the WhatsApp group we have and so we all knew uh, how the people went and how they are and what they are doing because there's something to talk about. Um, yeah, the recruitment of players. Um, we try to get as much people joining us as possible. Uh, how we do that is to send the message that everybody can play this game, whether you're disabled or have an injury or just can't. Uh, participate in a regular sport for any reason. Uh, we also have made uh, a poster and a flyer, you can see uh, on the left. And also uh, we make a little short video about how the game went and I will show you that. It has no music.
okay, that was the video we showed to some people to just to get them excited about the game, how to maybe they want to join us or something. Um, yeah, all besides showing the pictures and talking about it, uh, we also try to give clinics to rehabilitation center or schools just to know everybody to know about wheelchair handball and that they can play or just want or know somebody who wants to play just to get uh, as much uh, knowing about the, the game. We also do it by uh, give links by uh, other sport clubs to get more teams in the Netherlands playing wheelchair handball and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, sponsorships well uh, to keep playing everybody needs money we also need that so every year there is a collection from called uh, the foundation called Fonds Handicapped Sport where we try as much people from the club to walk the collection just to get as much uh, money uh, collected during that period uh, during the COVID-19, there was also an online collection from the foundation. Um, not only do we try to get money and attention during the collection period, we also try to promote it throughout the year by talking to local municipalities, or we try to get something in the local papers you see on the right, when we have achieved something or just... Uh, want to get attention about it. Um, and we also share the movies uh, showing the posts and flyers, like I said before, um, and also all kinds of action uh, photos and videos. Well, uh, questions will be answered later uh, after the seminary. So uh, that was it from me, from my side. Okay, thank you, Martin. So then we'll move on. Uh, we now hear from Flavio Miller from Brazil, and he is going to talk to us about training for four aside. Here we go. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Flavio Mello from Brazil. And today uh, I will speak English. I try to, to explain some, some experience with future hand for a side. And I hope that, you, that it um, can be really important for us. So first of all, I'd like to thank for the opportunity to be here uh, to talk about the Uche Handbo, specifically the Uche Handbo for a side. I, uh, for me, it's really important movement. It's um, a really important moment and the opportunity to continue the, the movement of development of that sport around the world. So thank you so much. And I'd like to to greet Mr. Taborski and all members of HF Uta Handball Working Group, all members of Coscabal Uta Handball Commission, and everyone present. Saludos también a los amigos de Centro America y también de Norte America que estén presentes. Today I will talk about Uta Handball and specifically training Uta Handball for a side. Okay, and it's important to say that to construct, to build that presentation um, was really important. Our friends who will appear in that presentation, they were really, impo really important to construct that moment. Okay, so. So here I present some content that will be present at that moment. An introduction, then some important aspects of which I handle. Then I, I, I bring to you 
training with your hand before a side with videos, a lot of videos and images. And it, it's only uh, ideas to ideas of training, training of defense, training of attack, and a conclusion. So to start an introduction, the Ucha Handball for a side, it's a variant of Ucha Handball, initially uh, developed in South Central America and then practiced in other continents. Uh, and now it's officially uh, a variant of Ucha Handball in IHF. And it was uh, really good. It was um, amazing. Um, it was really good, really, really, really good. <laughs> we are really proud of that. And we are talking about um, an exciting sport. We are talking about a, uh, a sport with a lot of strategy, with spectacular movements and spectacular goals, and with agi uh, who needs agility and strength and much more. So I will show you now uh, a little video about which handball for a side. Let's see. It was a promotional video of the last year, uh, the last which uh, national championship in Brazil in 2019, uh, sent by Abraca by our friend uh, Javelin Almeida, who is here with us. Thanks, Javelin. And um, now, some important aspects. Who needs uh, that needs to be considered in which hand go? So, so to develop the which hand ball club, a team or a project, we need leave a continuous process of recruitment of possible athletes. So it's too important to know about know more uh, about our athletes and know more about that new athletes, possible athletes. So it's really important to do an anamnesis or interviews um, to get more information about that person, uh, to know more about the specific aspects of the disability. Uh, it's, uh, is it a congenital, a congenital disability? Is it a acquired disability? Uh, the life story of that person, exist the other comorbidities, uh, what's their autonomy, autonomy level, what's the autonomy level, what's 
the, the level of assistance, of assistance needed. What's the level of assistance needed? Another point is the equipment. What equipment they have, what equipment they use, what equipment they do, do not have. And that person is a beginner or had some experience with wheelchair sports. And the most important, and it's really important, uh, what's the objective of that person in that practice? Uh, he or she want health promotion and quality of life, want to be an athlete, want to participate, or want to be an athlete, not yet. Um, we need to know more about that. That formation will be really important to ensure a better planning action. And it, it can be used individually and for your group. So it's really important. Regarding the wheelchair, the wheelchair is an um, athletic bar extension. So it needs to be built for each athlete individually uh, and ergonomic. And we need to think about the prices. We need to, to think about the possibilities to, to turn the, the access of wheelchair more, more cheap and the other possibilities. And so uh, the wheelchair needs to be ergonomic and individual to ensure safety and competitiveness. Uh, two other points really important are fastening and con container bands and cushions. So that are important items for safety and to avoid accidents. And should the, of course it, sh it should to consider the IHF rules and the IHF classification code. But the wheelchair it's um, really important. And now here I will present some specific, uh, some specific fundamentals of each handball and the three talks that I think it's essential for training. Okay, let's see some fundamentals of each handball. Handling, which uh, handling, like propulsion, braking, turn, sinuous path, about the throw. Seven, uh, seven meter meter throw, 360 rotation, falling forwards and the others, dribble. Can, uh, we can do it uh, alternately, continuous, progression, protection, uh, doing the protection, pass and reception, front, side of the throwing arm, step behind the body and pass overhead as a creature and the blocks, the offensive blocks and defensive blocks. That are some fundamentals of each handball. And I, I bring three tops really important. I like to use the specific skills, specific skills, uh, game situations and dy dynamic activities are really good alternatives to develop that fundamentals, as well as the physical, technical, and tactical aspects. So I really like to use activities uh, to improve individual technical of an athlete and specific wheelchair handball skills uh, by that activities. And about the game situations and decision make, um, decision make it's a really uh, it's a, a possibility uh, possible to to improve the the wheelchair handball situation, the the tactical and technical skills, and dynamic activities like uh, games, press sport games, and the others. So 
the first part of the training, it's really important, the stretching and the warming up. So I have selected three ways that can be used individually or, or together. It depends. So dynamic stretching. Uh, the dynamic stretching are important to, to avoid injuries. So because preparing the joint and muscle for, for the training. Uh, hitting with various activities, uh, using different intensities and different volumes. It depends on the objective. And, and press pot games too, like some games that I, I will show you now with videos sent by Mr. Samuel Macena from Ceará, Brazil. Here, stretching, dynamic stretching. Some games to warm me up, like game pass um, and the others. Uh, we a lot of, of, of possibilities. Now, another game. Another game. Why the hug be modified? And you can use different uh, rates of the of areas, different uh, big areas, um, and different rates of the area. Now about mobility and displacement with your handball. I selected some points that I, I that need to be developed, improved. Proportion, it's a really important point. And the proportion using the trunk to do the proportion. It's important to use the trunk for proportion. If the athlete use only the, the, sh the shoulders, uh, he may acquire, uh, acquire uh, injuries over the time. It, Probably that player who is only the shoulders and don't use it, the trunk can, can acquire injuries during the time. The brakes, uh, the change, uh, changing direction, mobility with changing direction, different intensities and different volumes. Um, the sinuous path, uh, the, the sinuous movements that can be used to faint, to uh, situation, different situations, uh, different um, game situations, and individual technique too. Slide in your chair, it's really important. Let's see some videos. Here, once a time again, once a time again, Mr. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Almeida sent for me that videos during the, the training of ESED Santa Catarina. In the reception.
here, pass involvement. I bring some ideas for you, trying to contribute. Um, now about training defense. It's really important, the defensive instructor, um, the uh, defensive instructor, the uh, individual marking, defensive blocks, it's really important. The wheelchair, wheelchair sport is, is a beta for space. So deficit blocks, it's really important to do in wheelchair hand before side. Board interception and counterattack. Quick ability replacement. Uh, so here we can use some instructors, um, uh, talk about different instructors with our athletes and high arms, okay? High arms, uh, uh, defensive posture with arms up, okay? Another point is uh, changing marking. It's important to, to work with them, changing marking, uh, training with one sheet, one against one, two against two, three against three, and one against two offense, uh, two attack, uh, two attacks, uh, two players for attack against one defensor, one one defensor, three against two defensors, four against three defensors are a lot of opportunities and possibilities. So let's see some videos. Activities that you can use attack and defense, training, attack and defense in the same time. High defense, low defense, individual marking here. Use it in the final of the game, sometimes if you are losing. And here, an example, an example during a game using uh, defensive blocks. Brazil and the Argentina, the final uh, defensive block now. The Argentinian player blocking, and now the Brazilian player defensive blocking in the, the Argentinian player. So it's really, really common the use of artists during the weekend the first half. Pivot. The Argentinian team attacking with a super, uh, numerical superiority. And now, training of attack. I, I think it's really, really important to develop, uh, to improve the, the individual technique for each athlete, like feint and throw, offensive blocks, counter attack with numerical superiority, quick athlete mm -hmm. replacement, scalping the marking and try to receive the ball to, to score the goal, scalping, escaping individual marking, etc. Here we are, we can see an example. Thank you with, thank you with, Yeah.
here, movementation to counterattack and, and the other possibilities like eight movementation, movementation to eight. Boa. And others here, uh, often, uh, often block, training in a game situation. Game situation. Here, counter attack in the uh, training. Training individual can be training with the pass of goalkeeper and individually or in group. It depends. You can use a lot of possibility. Here, training in game situations. It's it was uh, from San Miguel do Iguaçu, Paraná. They play with a handball and they they are playing this video. Pass to pivot and situation of game. It's important to, to do trainings with situ game situations, pass to pivot, um, feints, shots, and, set, and other possibilities. Another video from Sul Central America, Brazil against Argentina, an offensive block with the game and a really beautiful goal. And now the Brazilian player, a defensive block, individual marking. It was really important to, to the counter attack. Now Brazilian team have a, a numerical superiority. And we need to to train into the specific the specific skills of which I hand for a side. The spectacular goal with turning 360. So you need to do a spin, a complete spin, that and using only a hand, like Jaime here, our friend. Let's see, that video was sent for me a long time ago by this player. A complete video, we go and complete spin with it on a hand, touching on, with on a hand the, the wheelchair. So it needs to be training because in the game it can be appear the opportunity. Interception, and two goals. The goalkeeper goal uh, needs to be training too, because it's two goals, because during the game can happen the opportunity. No, no, no. It wasn't a goal, but the opportunity can appear, can happen, and you need to be prepared. <laughs> the spectacular goals too, and, and the, the seven meters throw, it's two points too, if you score the goal by seven meter throw, two points. And Mr. Daniel Magallanes, we, we we will explain about it tomorrow. And the conclusion, 
Deutsche Handbook, uh, I, I really uh, hope that we can leave the Deutsche Handbook together uh, as soon as possible. And I would like to, to see the Deutsche Handbook four aside and six aside with a strong development around the world. And I would like to see the next year, the first IHF Ucha Handball six aside and four aside World Championship. And the, the, the first Ucha Handball Championship four aside in South, in South America. We are, we are uh, available for that. And I believe it's the, the right way strict development activities with education, with, um, with referee, with delegates and, and classification and the others to develop their training around the world. And all of that in order to achieve our biggest goal, which is to make your handball a Paralympic sport. So thank you for attention. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Flavio. So now everyone, we have time for some questions and answers. Um, so far, we haven't received that many questions. So please do feel free to send your questions. Uh, so let's start with one. Somebody asked um, about tips for physical fitness for the players. Uh, I'm not sure who is best to answer that. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Physical fitness. Um, so we, I believe, we need to try to do um, to bring a lot of possibilities and physical fit, uh, the physical aspect, technical aspect, and tactical aspects needs to be worked with them. It's handball. It's not more than handball. Uh, so. How you can see uh, all of the uh, information that I passed to you have a lot of um, information bring it, uh, that comes from, from handball. Mm -hmm. So we need to prepare that players um, with different stimulations, um, but we need to prepare that players, uh, maybe if possible, uh, together with different, play, uh, different, uh, let me see, different uh, uh, professionals. Professionals. If you can, uh, if you can uh, stay together with uh, uh, physiotherapists and the other, it can be really important. If you can, uh, if you can work with a, a physical education teacher uh, that can uh, develop the physical, specifically that part, physical aspect, it's really important. So we need to know that we need to prepare them for uh, a sport, a competition, and needs to be worked with, uh, like the, the, other, the others, uh, the others, Handball, the handball indoor, the handball, um, the beach handball, but we need to know more about the characteristics. We need to know more because of that. I I I I told I told about it. It's important to know the possibilities of the athlete. Sorry, my English. <laughs> Very fine, thank you. Sorry. Uh, does anyone have anything else to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I want to tell some. Uh, is like Flavio said, is handball, and the, in normal handball we need to work in the gym, and that work is very, very, very important because the backs, because of shoulders. Uh, in the handball player, we need to work in gym and take the players more uh, strong. And uh, because of injuries, because they some players uh, used a wheelchair for uh, all day, and then all day 
in the chair in the afternoon is just training. I need to prepare a group a muscular groups for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, do you have anything to add to this topic? No, not really. Like Danilo said, uh, just train in the gym and get stronger and physical better. That's the most important, but that did Danilo said already, so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, this might be a bit difficult to answer verbally, but let's try. Somebody asked about exercises for goalkeepers. Does anyone have any specific tips they could share about that? Yes, I, I believe we can uh, use different stimulations, a lot of movement, movementation, uh, using different, um, different balls, um, balls um, uh, of tennis, <laughs> and uh, different uh, spins, um, different movementations, stimulations, uh, it, it, it don't have a uh, limit. <laughs> it's... Seeing what else is okay. For keeper is very important. And we work the, some uh, reaction of speed, some, but we work in the wheelchair, I, I, the same of uh, the formal handball. Only we need to adapt to wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But if they want uh, my email, I send some exercise, no problem. Okay. Thank you. So it sounds like um, people could really benefit from checking out all of the content on the education center, not only specific to wheelchair handball, to get some ideas of exercises they can do and things they can adapt for their wheelchair handball teams. So I would encourage everyone to have a visit to the education center and see what's there and see what you can take from there. Um, the other questions we have coming in are mainly about the rules, and I don't think that's really for you guys to answer. They're a bit yes and no kinds of uh, questions. Well, somebody asked, let, let's talk about this a little bit. Somebody asked, are the teams always mixed gender? So can we talk a bit about this? Uh, how do you, I believe we spoke about this last year, Flavio, about uh, having women in the teams. Uh, maybe it's more difficult, uh, there's been some more difficulty recruiting player, female players. Uh, also, maybe I can answer this question uh, because uh, it is not first time this uh, question we receive it uh, mostly also from South America. Mm -hmm. Six uh, aside uh, are playing with mixed team. It is uh, not so easy in many national federations to separate ladies and men together because uh, uh, this uh, possibility to recruit to find players is limited especially in small country also six aside uh, is for both genders and it's also uh, clear that uh, on each moment have to be at least two ladies on the field mm -hmm. and uh, for a side have all possibility. For a side we can play with mixed team and we can play it also with separate team. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's just discuss one other element. Um, I think in our audience, we surely have people who have already started with wheelchair handball, but I'm sure we also have some people who are in the earlier stages. So what advice can we hear from all of you who have been involved for such a long time uh, for people starting out with wheelchair handball in their federations, for example? Sorry, can you repeat the... the... I, I, I... Okay, Danilo? Okay. okay. Voila. In, in uh, I said in Portugal, we have inside of national federation, 
and uh, I think that is the way, not outside of the national federation. Okay, and in the beginning we start uh, maybe ten years more than else, and we start on uh, inside of federation, and we work everything uh, with wheelchair handball pass with the national federation. And I, I think that is the, the way not out because then for uh, the EHF and EHF is not work with the, another uh, associations because and uh, the, my advice is go speak with national federations. They said, okay, we want to make that. How make, how help us to make, okay. In Brazil, it was a little different. We, <laughs> yeah, a little different. We needed to, to, to start in into the universities by programs of in universities and uh, physical uh, physical disability institutions. So and then it was necessary to create an association. An association, Brazilian association uh, of wheelchair handball, to develop that sport. And then now, only now, we are in. We are together with the national federation. We are uh, together to develop that sport, and it was really important. It was really important. So, if you want to start the wheelchair handball, I don't know your country, the possibilities. If you can uh, be together with the the national federation it will be really important it's it's really important because if you don't have that um, approximation you it's uh, you need a lot of support of um, sponsors and the other things in, in our country we have a lot of difficulty about it okay uh well th that brings us to the end of the question so i think we will finish up there then. Uh, Frantisek, do you have any closing comments for today? Uh, I can also repeat, uh, thank you very much for all which participate. Uh, I am uh, very happy that uh, was uh, nearly 60 people involved and uh, uh, I am looking for tomorrow. Tomorrow we will continue with uh, referee and uh, technical uh, delegates program. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Muchas gracias a todos también. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Taborski, Danilo, todos, Artur. Uh, muchas gracias, Kutney, uh, for all. And Gracias a todos. Obrigado a todos. Now in Portuguese. Obrigado a todos. <laughs> and in Dutch. <laughs> Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Thank you for all. Okay, so as everyone's mentioned, we are back tomorrow, everyone, again at one o'clock, uh, Central European summertime. And we have four new lecturers you're going to hear from, from almost four new countries, but also we hear from Brazil again. Uh, so we will see you tomorrow at one o'clock Central European summertime. Thank you so much to all our lecturers. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes, our translators. And we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>